Well, good afternoon, everyone. Today is Monday, the 22nd of June. Glad to be with you. Hi, Amanda. Hello. I can't believe it's already the 22nd of <laughs> it's June. The, um, it is actually the end of June. That's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. That means we've been quarantining for more than three months. La, 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 la. <laughs> How is that possible? I do not want to hear this. Okay, so uh, honestly now, when we first went into quarantine over three months ago, did you think to yourself, hey, you know, we're going to be doing this in uh, three months? Or was it more a couple of weeks? Even that, I think that's what we heard. A couple of weeks, we just need to buckle down to make sure our hospitals don't get overcrowded and right. flatten the curve. Remember yes. that? Yep. Flatten yep. the curve seems so one. long ago. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what was it for you? Short, short bit or long bit? Oh yeah. No, I totally thought it was short. Like I thought, okay, this will be kind of, you know, almost like a, an extended like Christmas break or something like that where it's just. I think most people were thinking, yeah, yeah. You know what? I could use a few days to do life different, slow down okay. a little bit. It's, it's kind of an I think we even talked maybe about it being a kind of a Sabbath period where God right. just gives us some, something different, different focus. Yeah. How's that working out for you? <laughs> it's a little different. Man, 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 it's a, you crack me up. Listen, you have four kids under the age of what now? 12? Under, yeah, 10 there. 10? 10 and under, yeah. 10? Is Bentley only 10? He is. Wow, she's I so know. old for her age. Yep, and then and then you have uh, Briella, one of our <laughs> students over there with you a lot. So that's five. That's crazy. Yep. So yeah, uh, I only have two adult, uh, grown children <laughs> at the house. So God bless you. <laughs> yeah. Folks Luckily, on Facebook land. Pretty, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, they're pretty easy going. Like last week, they um, we turned them loose in the yard and let them play with the hose. And that was oh, like yeah. the highlight of their month, apparently. So <laughs> that's pretty cool. And yeah. it's supposed to be what, like 95 or something. <clears throat> I have triple digits for us tomorrow in my weather. Oh, I'm not ready. So, I'm not ready. You know, I like the heat. Yeah. Uh, I'm a I'm kind of like the heat person and uh, all right well as, as stimulating and edifying as this discussion is about the weather how about if we move on <laughs> yeah it's not why people tuned in is that what you're saying are people I don't know are people tuned in <laughs> uh, yeah it looks like we have a few we have eight currently eight? well we're glad the eight of you are <laughs> are uh, it's our biggest pleasure to be here to serve you right now. And I uh -oh. want to start by remembering Father's Day. So mm. yesterday was Father's Day. Yes. I was a father and my my boys celebrated. We were coming home from the mountains where we spent the weekend uh, camping and it was just glorious. And when I got home, uh, you know, one of my favorite dinners is breakfast, breakfast for dinner. Mm, so pancakes yeah. and eggs and bacon and so uh we decided to support sherry's and uh ordered some dinner from sherry's and just had a nice celebration and uh because pancakes with butter and syrup wasn't quite enough to fill me up i uh had the boys get me a banana cream pie which is one of my favorite pies by the way nice so uh we we ate the nanny cream pie and celebrated me which is uh, one of my favorite people <laughs> one of your favorite things to celebrate huh right. just like you all yeah it's a gift <laughs> to celebrate yourself so yeah. my boys bought me a, a really cool fishing shirt and a uh you know with sun control and all that kind of stuff and vents so you don't get too hot and a hat and it was just a great surprise and a joy to to be celebrated as as their father and yeah. uh, you know i talked to my dad of course and uh who's 87 and doing great and appreciated him and 
So I wanted to talk a little bit because I was thinking about this yesterday and, and I actually, I don't always do this, but I was prompted, I think by Holy Spirit saying, mm. Steve, do this. But I, I, in a time of prayer in the mountains said, Father, Heavenly Father, thanks for being my dad. And that was really, that was really a gift for me to be able to celebrate one, my sonship. Yeah. And two, that I have a father who is the creator of all things, <laughs> the God of the universe. I wanted to recall the baptism of Jesus for us mm -hmm. from um, the gospel of Matthew, the third chapter. And so Jesus, we know, is just entering into his uh, public ministry. He mm -hmm. will be baptized here by John the Baptist. And then he'll be led by Holy Spirit into the desert for a 40-day temptation. And before Jesus begins his ministry, he is empowered with the Holy Spirit. That's why he can say to the disciples and us about the miracles and the, and the demon exorcisms and all of the rest, that we could do the things he did and even greater things than those. Because yeah. our power is the same as his. Yeah. Spirit. But it's a, it's a sweet and intimate moment of relationship, of, of Trinitarian fellowship. You know, we think that sometimes erroneously, well, you know, God was lonely. And so he created humankind. No, right. not really. <laughs> God yeah. was already in relationship because of the trinity so father son and holy spirit our god is a relational god without yeah. it's part of his makeup and characteristics yeah there's this song um by hillsong that has like a line in it that talks about um right. jesus you didn't want heaven without us <laughs> and mm. you know it's like <laughs> I, I understand what you're trying to say there right. but yeah Right, almost establishing uh, God's need for humanity. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, which is it? Which is, by the way, I, I'm gonna I'll probably be on rabbit trails today. <laughs> but what's new? That's yeah. interesting. It's it's important to pay attention to the lyrics we sing in our praise songs and even our hymns. There's some hymns we sing that I think, uh, uh, not great theology there. Yeah. But, um, that's a, that's a side note. We'll, we'll handle that another time. <laughs> so from the Gospel of Matthew, the third chapter, starting at the 13th verse, if you're following along in your Bibles, then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. But John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? Jesus replied, let it be so now, God's proper timing, it is proper for us to do this to fulfill as all righteousness. Then John consented. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove, alighting on him. And a voice said from heaven, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Uh, brothers and sisters in Christ, and daughters and sons of our heavenly father these are the words that god speaks to you at your baptism just like he spoke to them at at to jesus at his baptism you are his daughter you are his son the beloved one and in you he is well pleased and so we we praise and thank and remember yesterday not only our earthly fathers who admittedly are flawed. I, I haven't done everything perfect. Just ask yeah. my boys. <laughs> <laughs> At 18 and 20, they're happy to tell you. <laughs> strayed or erred in my ways. <laughs> but still, uh, what, a, what a gift it is to have a, a heavenly father that is perfect, that didn't yeah. make mistakes as we grew up. And, uh, yeah. uh, you know, Amanda, you have a, like uh, what do I want to say, an interesting history with your father and your your uh, stepfather. 
Yeah. And, uh, so sometimes Father's Day can be complicated. I'm sure you have a lot of emotions. Yep. Absolutely. And so what do you what do you do with those? And then you know, are you in the space of being able to say to your heavenly Father, mm -hmm. "Thank you for calling me daughter." Yeah. You know, it's when so um my dad passed away when I was 16. Mm -hmm. And so, which basically means, you know, I didn't really come to know him because yeah. at age probably 12 or 13 is when I start to check out, you know, start to just do the teenage thing. And I really, um, we butted heads a lot. And so for a long time, it was more, I had, I had childhood memories, but not like a, a real understanding of an intimate relationship with a father figure. Yes. And so that was really um, a foreign thing for me to hear all of this talk when I started coming to youth group regularly around the same age, to hear a lot of talk about Father God and about all of that kind of stuff, because I think so often we um, intertwine those, whether we want to or not. Yeah, our, our Heavenly Father and our Earthly Father. Yeah, yep. yeah we kind of mix um, the qualities, apply the qualities of our Earthly Father to our Heavenly Father. Um, and you know, it's, it can be a really complicated thing for a lot of people. Um, you know, I know there's a lot of people who have had hard histories with their dad, mm -hmm. um, and who, or who have had dads who weren't there, um, who were absent. You know, I think about my kids who will for their life have, um, a relationship with their birth father, hopefully, and Tim as their as their dad. And so there's just so many, like you talk about complicated things. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, uh, my, my biological father, I don't know. I'll never know having right. been adopted as a, as a, a infant. Yeah. And so yeah, there's a lot of complicated history mm -hmm. there too. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. to know that uh, God is our heavenly father in a yeah. perfect and different way yeah fathers is a gift yes. mm -hmm. absolutely it was one where when i started to realize that and be able to really separate them um the deeper i came to understand god and the trinity and all of that um it was it was a real gift for me then to say okay yes god is my heavenly father and that means something very different than just a kind of biological or earthly um, parent relationship you know there are similarities for sure but i like you talk about it, it's unimaginable for us to be in a relationship with a parent that's perfect outside of god <laughs> oh yeah because there is no such thing right uh, as much as we might try we're always gonna absolutely and, and so yeah it's a real gift um to be able to recognize that and like um like you god turned my mind and heart to that yesterday as well oh so good just, yeah we didn't yeah. even talk about this but yeah tell me more yeah. about that that's yeah, yeah. you know yeah. um yeah. one of the gifts that i got when i was in college from in talking through with some of the struggles with even trying to imagine god as a father and things like that and um, they said, you know, you can imagine God as a parent if you need to separate even the word father for a little while to let God speak into that and heal that. He, um, you know, it was one of my professors was like, that's not that's not dishonoring. And so for me, once I had that freedom, it kind of helped me break the mold and break that connection um, of the big tie-in where it wasn't then all of a sudden God wasn't absent or missing from my life in that intimate way um I was able to open my heart you know in a new way yeah. and so yesterday it was fun to both celebrate Tim and be able to really think about that we have such a gift in um in this perfect father and it was you know it was really it was a cool experience to have some time to just reflect on that well, and you tap into something really important there because look at how many names the Bible uses to speak of God. Yeah. You know, the God of refuge, the God of redemption, uh, the mm -hmm. Lord. And then look also at how Jesus spoke as God and, and triune father still, you know, how he spoke of his father. Yeah. But, you know, <laughs> I tell people it's kind of, this is kind of funny. I mean it a, a, in a joking way. Yeah, it's true. Uh, I tell people, have you ever thought of God as a, a, a female chicken? And they say, well, of course I haven't thought of God as a female. 
who would do that? And I'm glad they asked that question. <laughs> but if you think about this, uh, Jesus came up over the Mount of Olives and looked into Jerusalem. And so Jer Jerusalem, it would it would have been this uh, this this vast city amongst just desolate waste. Yeah. By the way, they call it the Promised Land, and uh, it, it was been there and seen with it. honey at one point. Yeah. <laughs> but it's not like that now. <laughs> I keep thinking to myself, and people are fighting over this land. <laughs> anyway, so <laughs> as Jesus crested the Mount of Olives and saw Jerusalem, his heart turned to lament, and mm. he was he was mourning for his people. And he says, as a uh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, uh, how I have so longed uh, to gather you as a mother hen gathers her chicks. And he mm -hmm. talks about you've, you've uh, pushed away or, uh, you know, didn't listen to the prophets. You're still not coming back to me. But God, Jesus says, like a mother hen. I mean, so here it is, a female chicken. It's funny. Yeah. <laughs> but God is has that motherly, you know, God transcends gender. Yeah. And he transcends humanity. We think to ourselves, like a mother hen, how how I mean, is that a way to describe right. God? But have you ever seen a mother hen and her chicks? Or oh, any yeah. I mean, around here it's waterfowl. We have them all yeah. over. Have you ever seen a goose and her chicks? Or oh yes and her chicks mm -hmm. uh don't mess with mama bird <laughs> yes absolutely You're taking your life in your own hands yeah this is this is the picture that we have of god and so to refer to god as as mother or as parents or as uh, a mother hen wants to gather her chicks yeah. yeah absolutely especially if that helps us break the connectedness that mm -hmm. we've most of the time on our subconsciously put between our own father and our heavenly father or yeah. our mother and our, you know, God, God who transcends gender. Yeah. Yeah. I love too, that you brought up the moment of baptism. Cause I do love of Jesus's yeah. baptism. Cause I do love that glimpse of, yeah. of a perfect child parent relationship. And it's such, you know, it's so amazing to see in it. Um, as a parent it gives me something to strive for as well. And like you talked about also to sit in the place of receiving that from God, of right. hearing, you know, that we are beloved and that we are chosen um, is it's a powerful picture. And it's a, it's a powerful reminder for us. Um, I think, especially if Father's Day was a complicated day for people. Um, that's, you know, such a beautiful reminder that we all are children of of a perfect God. And that's yep. incredible. Absolutely. And I, I appreciated Pastor Corey's prayers yesterday as he as he began the, the prayer of the church, reminding us that, yeah, you know what? Our fathers haven't been perfect and some are abusive. Yeah. Uh, some are unattentive. Uh, some are absent even. So mm -hmm. it, grasp onto the the gift of the perfect heavenly father is uh, just su such a such a meaningful way to celebrate and remember him on father's day and so yeah. i want to close with this because i think this is of utmost importance okay what is our heavenly father's favorite pie <laughs> i would say personally definitely not banana cream because that one's mm. like I just you're not a banana cream fan I'm not a banana cream fan but funny enough my stepdad is that's one of the things we got him like a bunch of um Cyrus O'Leary's mini banana cream pies for Father's Day See, so, you. It's not, I think it's a dad thing that was my guy's <laughs> favorite pie too I don't know it was great though in fact there's an I think there's a piece or two well <laughs> I say this there was a piece or two left this morning but yeah. when I go home um, from the office I'm pretty sure they will not be living there anymore in the refrigerator. Yeah, they may be gone. They weren't they, stashed, they away, be, they were stashed away, hidden. <laughs> well, you know, my boys yeah. are looking after my welfare after all. So 
Uh, yeah, absolutely. They just want you around for longer. They want me around for longer. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> well, it's great to be together. And uh, so and are we getting any comments on Facebook about yeah, how did you, how did you celebrate? What's your favorite pie? Oh yeah, let's hear some of those. Um, and while we do, there were a lot of people really, um, the thing that got the most comments was you talking about breakfast for dinner. That is a popular <laughs> thing. They love it, uh, right? I'm, yes. People, I'm them. telling you, Rex, yeah. oh, it's the best. It's yeah, good. Heather Colburn said that she might need to do a bacon and eggs tonight. So Woo! Matt and Caitlin have you to thank for, you know, if Heather makes breakfast for dinner. Right, what time would that be, Heather? <laughs> Are you asking if she has like a socially distant outside area you can go sit like <laughs> i'll sit in my truck and uh eat there if need be That'd yeah be <laughs> yeah oh jenny said she made some amazing homemade sourdough waffles saturday morning too yummy I know. i've never heard of sourdough waffles i think she's on a sourdough kick um because she has a sourdough starter that she's been raising so you got a like, starter you know they become like little children and then you want them to flourish and grow and yes. make something with their lives <laughs> yep she actually she posted about that on her on her facebook or something saying that for home ec families for home ec maybe that could be a different thing rather than the fake baby dolls they could get <laughs> the sourdough starter hey amen jenny i'm with you on that <laughs> oh, Betty Quinn has a good comment here too. She said, okay. my favorite pie is any made by someone else. <laughs> ah, Betty, I'm with you there too, sister. I'll say amen and hallelujah. <laughs> now, um, are you going to be flooded with pies? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I can imagine, you know, waking up to... 36 banana <laughs> cream pies on the porch. Yikes. <laughs> yeah, let's not do that. Let's just say that uh, we had a pie and that's it's all good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's funny. Um, yeah, so we have lots of different, oh, pecan pie, pumpkin pie. Those are some of the favorites rolling well, in. The classic fall ones. I mean, the, the reality is, is I, I've never met a pie that I don't like. Are you I'm like... Not, have a gump with shrimp where he talks about all the different shrimps you could do that with pies is that what you're telling us uh rhubarb is one of my favorite <laughs> oh, no. like it. you know what here i did lie there is one mince meat oh mince meat pie i'm not even sure what that is yeah meat uh right. <laughs> and i'm not sure what mince is <laughs> uh anyway yeah, yeah. actually I don't know how we got, oh, I'm going to go off on a tangent. Again, are yeah. we already off like a tangent of yeah. a tangent? <laughs> okay, so this is, yeah, today's, uh, today's lesson is uh, keep up with Pastor Steve. <laughs> how in the world did we mess up Christmas treats? And um, we got mincemeat, fruitcake. I mean, honestly, yeah. where did that come from? That stuff. Uh, the next time I need, need to build a retaining wall, I'm using fruitcake. <laughs> Honestly, that stuff, it has a place, but it's not in the eating department. Yeah, not for digestion. Build stuff with it. It'll make a great foundation. Uh, we may even do a, a fruitcake uh, fundraiser and uh, start our new building program with fruitcake. <laughs> Those things would last. Fruitcake, yeah. Yeah, it's definitely uh you know yeah. oh and jenny says with mincemeat grout <laughs> yeah mince you know what here's the body of christ <laughs> clicking on all cylinders oh no oh, i mean listen <laughs> this is how it, things were supposed to be <laughs> so basically i think what we're telling people is that if you're wondering how quarantine is going, this is how it's going. It's Steve going. is plotting to the build a new is the last 10 minutes. <laughs> Basically, yes. <laughs> it's gotten bad, people. Yes. <laughs> well, Before should we Jesus come? <laughs> switch over to announcements? <laughs> yeah, we should do announcements before something okay. worse happens. So, what do we have, Amanda? <laughs> okay. First announcement is actually a question for you. 
now. Um, Pastor Steve, have you been sending out text messages asking people to buy gift cards? Have you moved on from emails to text now? <laughs> I'm using emails. I'm using texts. I'm using carrier pigeons. There's a guy on a horse that I'm calling Pony Express. So however you get it, yes, I'm in desperate need of gift cards. <laughs> And by that, he means no. It is by not that, him. I mean negative. I'm not sending out emails. I'm not right. sending out text. We're, we're doing great. Don't need any gift cards. Yeah. No Pony Express. No your <laughs> Pigeons. Yes. So, yes, that is not actually is Pastor happening? Steve. What is, I mean, see, this, this yeah. is what happens. We talk to Google, and when I say we, I mean Lisa. And there's <laughs> not a whole lot we can do about this when you're a public figure and your yep. email and phone number and all the rest are kind of right. out it's there just and happen. just happen. So yep. there's not a whole lot I can do about that. Yep. Just, so if no. you're ever in doubt, you can call always call the office, call, call Steve. Me directly. Yep. Call, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But also he will not ask you for a gift card over I will email not or ask for a gift card. I promise. <laughs> a pie, I might ask you for <laughs> Okay, so that is our first announcement. Jenny had posted about that in the comments early on. Oh, I appreciate so I wanted to that, that, Jenny. Yeah, good. Um, and then also Kelly um, wanted to mention anyone who is looking for portals of prayer or Christ in our home, she's happy to send those to you. And so if you want to call her at the office or email her, um, she would be happy to get one of those in the mail for you. Um, and so feel free to do that. And then other than that, we're kind of just continuing on. Um, Pastor Corey's Bible study is on a break for the summer, just a reminder. So don't show up on Zoom for it or you're going to be just waiting. Um, and then also we have living room worship um, is going to happen Thursday night as well. So we're looking forward to hearing what that theme will be and all of that. And that's kind of other than that. Keep staying tuned to the grapevines and that Kelly's doing a great job sending out and all of those things and continue to pray for our COVID-19 relaunch team. Um, I've been praying for you guys and appreciate the work you're doing. And um, I'm looking forward to when that won't need to be a thing anymore. <laughs> yep. We're all looking forward to that when that's not a thing. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like we're moving in the right direction. <laughs> yeah. Oh, how uh -oh. cities. You can do it. <laughs> yeah. Heather Colburn has an idea for you, for you. She said, what about a gift card for a pie? <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Here's the Penalty. content that, that's in me. On the one hand, yes. On the other. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So I love our kind of friends on Facebook, don't you, Amanda? This is great. Yeah. One of these days, we should just do all a Zoom with our regular watchers and then go live on Facebook and watch the melee. <laughs> Wouldn't that be a hoot? That'd be great. So, Amanda, yeah. you know what? Um, I have I have been off Facebook for a week and a half. I haven't even checked. In fact, this is the first time I've been on Facebook. And yeah. I have, like, I don't know. Uh, it says... It only says 20 plus whatever that is. Uh, Comments or notifications. Or whatever. So it just yeah. it's, it's up high. But it is so freeing. Maybe we should talk about that. But, you know, here's yeah. the thing. How do you do a Facebook Live family chat and encourage people not to be on Facebook? Hmm. <laughs> I actually, maybe we'll talk about this some on Thursday because I've been implementing That's some what I was stuff for me. That's that's what I was thinking. I yeah. think, so let's so folks out there on Facebook land in the RLC family chat, think about your use of social media and how that's been going, especially for the last three months. I finally got to the place, Amanda, where I couldn't go on Facebook. Yeah. Becoming super cranky. And that's that's not <laughs> good for me or for the people I'm around. It's yeah. just not a healthy thing anymore. Your buddy, Mike Golden, recommends, he says, switch to YouTube. <laughs> it's so deep. I'm going to have to think about that. Yeah. 
I love Mike. Love you, Mike. That's good stuff. Yeah. I'll give you a call when we're done here. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I think that is all of our announcements. So that'll be a good preview for Thursday. Join us for that. And um, with that, do you want to close us in prayer? I would love to pray. Okay. It's such a gift. Um, all right. Thanks for joining us. Let's let's pray together. Yeah. Uh, Father, whether whether we're enjoying this prayer right now as it's spoken together, or we're watching it later on YouTube or here on Facebook, God, we know that that our prayers uh, are powerful and effective because that's what your word says. And so uh, we don't take lightly the opportunity to, to pray or the, the efficacy of prayer, because we know, Lord God, that uh, you hear us and you respond. But God, I would pray that, that we would listen for your answer. And God, sometimes you respond with an overwhelming yes and, and give us what uh, our hearts desire. There are other times you just outright say no. This is not for you and or not the time. And there's still yet other times, Lord, where I think maybe this is even worse than a no, where you say wait. So God, as we've talked today, uh, especially about you as our Heavenly Father and we as your children through baptism, God, we, we ask you, uh, to, to help us to be in that place, to be able to receive from you as you say yes or no or wait, and then to know that, that any and all of those answers are from a loving, all-knowing, grace-filled, um, mercy-laden God of the universe. And so we're grateful to be called your daughters, and your sons to hear your love for us and God to hear that you're pleased with us Lord there's so much that brings us shame or guilt and God we want to be released from that shame God, and, and, and pray that you would help us to hear that you are pleased right now that we don't have to do anything more that we don't have to to become someone new that you love and are pleased with us in this moment for exactly who we are. So send us now into the rest of this day that we would love and serve you in it, receive the gifts of grace that you uh, so generously shower upon us. Through Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Amanda. Always a joy. Thanks, RLC family and others. It's yes. a, a gift to be together. We'll see you on Thursday afternoon right here at 2 p.m. for our next family chat. We miss you guys. We miss you. We love you. God bless you. Yes. <laughs>